ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today you join Mook and I in the truck, headed to Des Moines with an empty trailer and some cash in our hands, because we are going to pick up something Mook doesn't know about yet. A surprise. Oh God. Any guesses? Not even in the slightest. <laughs> Perfect. I don't know anything about this vehicle. I know it doesn't run as it sits, but it looks to be in pretty good shape. So that being said, let's continue our very bumpy drive to Des Moines and kick this off. Yeah, it's this one. They have a dinosaur! <laughs> it's the dinosaur. Oh my god, I've been... Oh my god! <laughs> it's a Jeep! No way, is this the one I found this morning? This is the one on Marketplace. I, he has two! He's sharing? <laughs> I love these Jeeps. These like late 80s, early 90s Grand Wagoneers. Hello. Also, I think I bought our entryway table at this house. Seriously? Yeah, I think that's why I recognize it. So while I'm backing this up, I woke up and, you know, muscle memory, checked Marketplace this morning and saw this and messaged the guy and we struck a deal pretty quick because it's a good deal for one of these. And I woke Mook up and I said, get in the truck, I got a surprise for you. And of course, on the way down, <laughs> she hops on Marketplace and goes, hey, look at this sweet Grand Cherokee wagon or this, this Grand Wagoneer. I'm like, mm, yeah, that's... <laughs> We'll have to go check that out someday. That's pretty cool. I knew, I knew you'd, I thought about telling you not to check Marketplace. <laughs> That'll do it. Let's go check it out. Here it is. I don't know a thing about this. I just saw the Wagoneer you liked and woke you up. <laughs> oh my God, it is a black Jeep too. I bought it from a coworker. Um, okay. I know that he got it for my kid in Cedar Rapids. Yeah, she's got some like, some northern rust going on, but at the yeah, same time, I think it's been in Iowa for a long time. At the same time, looks like it almost went south with the condition of the door seals and. Oh my gosh! There, I mean, it's it's rusty. Like, don't don't get me wrong. Like, she's old and needs some work. I did get it to run um, when I was working on it. Okay. So six of the eight spark plugs are are new. So I couldn't get to the back two, but the front two and these four, those are new spark plugs. Gotcha. If you pour fuel directly into it, fires. it fires. Okay. So it's either something with the fuel pump, the fuel line, or the fuel tank. So if you know engines and can troubleshoot that, you'll be good. Uh, I do know a thing or two. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a bit like of a mechanic myself. I feel like you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you're going to get it. Here, let's get the paperwork going. I'm so excited. The funny <laughs> Good surprise. Is, the funny part is, is I found this on Marketplace and I was like... <laughs> Are we going to pick this up? <laughs> Not for two grand, you won't think. No. <laughs> She's got some rust. I can yeah. see clean through the driver's floor pan. You get it loaded up, head home, start yeah. working on it? Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, strap it down and head to the shop. Ready? Yeah. Start at the usual? Yeah. Brakes? Yay. 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 Before we start on brakes and all the boring stuff, should we see if it runs? It's probably a good start. I, I can't help but agree. Mmm. Okay, Motorcraft two barrel. Yay. Two barrel. Look at all those wires. Okay, Just that's chilling. a little scary. <laughs> good. Get the spray, as your mom says. Mom, we're getting the spray. Oh! Ooh. Oh my god, that works. Life. You got life on the I dash? Do. I should buckle up, it's telling me. Oh, you got the digital AMC clock. A classic. I'm getting a lot of Eagle vibes out of this. Eagle, Eagle. Yeah, let me check oil quick. Very full and very clear. How many miles are on this? 145,000. Oh, God. Please still be good. <laughs> All right, we'll see if she cranks a little bit. The Dura Spark, so we love Spark. Hmm, I say that. I got 80 oil pressure. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and say that doesn't work. <laughs> Crank. I got no spark. That's interesting. This is gonna get fun fast. I can already tell. I got we do not. I'm thinking the Dura Spark box might have burnt out. Okay, so the way these four DuraSpark ignition systems work is basically an electric set of points, same as an HEI does. 
you have a power on the ground, an AC input side, and then an interruption circuit for the coil. Just like a set of points, you have a lobe with eight marks or eight bumps on your distributor uh, shaft, and as it rotates, it opens those points and interrupts the ground for the coil and it makes a spark. Now, in the electric ignition systems, they replace those lobes with a little piece of steel that goes past an electromagnet sensor, essentially. Uh, this is called a Hall effect sensor. It then generates a small AC current when that magnet passes a piece of metal. And that AC current is then sent into this box, which then opens the ground electronically to the coil and produces a spark. Here is all of that in a drawing. As you can see, our red is our pre-resistor power in to feed the module 12 volts. The coil is fed 12 volts post ballast resistor, except for when starting. This is the starter bypass we talked about in the starter solenoids before. The white one is a second 12 volt input for when starting. The green one is your ground wire for the coil, and you'll have an orange, purple, and black. These colors can change a bit, but the orange and purple are going to be your AC coil that we just talked about, and the black one's just the ground inside the distributor. Now this is so similar, in fact, to an HEI that you can interchange them. All three, Mopar, Ford, and Duraspark, can run each other. So like in this case, you can use the same distributor rewire all these to be appropriate and use any ignition box you want. Now I told you all of that because A, that's something cool to know, and B, you need to know how these work so that you understand this next step. What I'm going to do is take those two wires, the purple and orange, find where they land on the Jeep AMC side of the wire color spectrum. So purple-ish in orange turns into Wait. Well, I'm unplugging our dirt spark box. I got a hell of a good spark. Turn the key off, Mook. Turn it back on. Turn it back off. Okay, that's a self test I've found in the past that shows that at least all the wiring is good. Do it one more time. Off. Yeah, when you turn it off, you get one more spark. You'll notice once in a while on a Ford, you turn the key off and it goes thunk. If it wasn't already running, that's because that last spark hit a hit something in the cap and actually went to a piston that had uh, compression and ignition and fuel sitting there. Anyway, what I was going to show you is if we follow these wires through and find the two that would be purple and orange, and we set our voltmeter to AC. Go ahead, Mook. Okay. Yeah, see how it made voltage? That means our Hall effect sensor is picking up that little piece of metal moving past it and it's creating a signal to this box. So from that I can see our coil is good because it's over there sparking. Our Hall effect sensor is good and if we don't have spark right now I'm gonna start digging into replacing our DuraSpark box. All right old DuraSpark box is out. I was able to find some, some new pigtails so I could use the Ford connectors. Wired that guy in that'll make this easier for us in the future. Let's see if that's our fix. Hey there we go. All right yeah we got good spark. Let's put this back together and try it again. I've heard better sounding engines. I don't know what the I don't know what the was. Was that not you? No, it was like all the valves. At least it's not dead or seized. Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think that's a bunch of bad valve train followed by a little rod knock from the bottom end. It doesn't sound too happy, huh? It does not sound happy. I'd ask you what kind of oil pressure you have, but I know the answer is 80. Uh, all of it. Yeah, the gauge doesn't work right. I wonder if you can put an LS in a Wagoneer. <laughs> it's not what it looks like. That's actually our fuel jug, not a jug of oil. It was at one point, though. Let's go ahead and see if this sucker will pull up some gas and run on its own without making a giant uh, geyser of fuel. And then listen to how bad the motor is. Go ahead, Mook. Oh, God. Well, 
That is not fantastic, I'll tell you that. But. That sounds so bad. How is it possibly that loud? I've never heard an engine that loud in my life. What? Is there zero oil pressure? It sounds like it's just mechanical lifters. Good God, that is bad. <laughs> I have never heard something that bad before. That's like a Y block out of oil after 10,000 miles. I don't think we have any oil pressure for some reason. Let's see if we can find the oil pressure port for like the electric sensor and swap in a mechanical one. All right, thanks to Ben Pack, we got the sucker in the air. Let's take the oil filter off. Nothing's coming out. It doesn't really feel like it has anything in it either. It's completely, <laughs> uh-oh. We don't have any oil flow. You know, I've seen external pumps dry up and you gotta pack them full of grease to get them to flow. Okay, a quick Google has confirmed this is an external oil pump. The angle distributor was my first clue. This right here is the face plate with the oil filter adapter on it. I need to take this guy off and then I can get to the gears and pack those with Vaseline and this should prime. As you can see, nothing in there at all. So they didn't uh, fill the oil filter before putting it on. It is sideways, so you can only half blame them, but you should be able to half fill this at least to get it on there. Another clue I have to this is the fact when I checked the oil, it was very clean and a quart overfilled. There's your extra quart. I wondered if we had no oil pressure when I heard all 16 lifters making noise because they were all pumped down and just clattering like crazy. Not just one. Hopefully no one ran it before us. We didn't run it much. I think it'll be okay. All right, let's take that cover off, pack that with Vaseline. I bet this motor's still just fine. It's an AMC, they don't care. I'm not gonna say that went perfect. I broke one of the bolts off without even trying. So that was fun. I don't think I'm the first one to be in here. Oh, there it goes. Hello. Perfectly dry gears. Still, ooh, I'd say they still look healthy, but they've chewed on some stuff. Where the hell do we get this gasket, Mook? Oh, that is, we have cardboard boxes. <laughs> you can get the beer box for the oil pump gasket. <laughs> get the red RTV out. All right, let's see if I can get that bolt out of there. Good news, Mook. Got it. Yay! All right, while I did that, Mook hopped on the O'Reilly's website. They have an oil pump repair kit for this. It comes with new gears, gasket, spring, and restrictor for the piece that's in the housing. So I think that's here tomorrow morning. Yeah. I'm assuming since this is so worn out, the clearances are so large that it couldn't pull enough vacuum to actually prime itself, especially all the way back from the pan. Had the previous owner uh, ran Lucas in it, maybe to make it a little stickier, and especially filled the oil filter, much higher chance that it would not have done this. So I think we've caught it early enough that it's not an issue. I think we're good. I did hear some rod knock on the bottom end, but you'd have that if there's no oil pressure. So yeah. 140,000 miles, it's all pretty worn. I don't think it's quite done yet though. All right, it's been a day. We've got our pump repair kit. This comes with a new spring, a new whatever this thing is. I believe this goes in the other spring. It's the pressure bore piece, a new gasket, and new gears. I believe our spring and that one piece is in here. So we got to pop this guy open, get those out, get this all cleaned up, get this gasket off if you even want to call it that anymore. <laughs> and then we will be able to uh, reinstall this, pack it all full of grease, and it should be good. Right, Mook? Yeah. All right, here you go, lick this clean. No. Let's see what treasures are hiding in here, Mook. Goop. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. And a spring. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I don't know if this needs replaced. We have a new one, might as well. So what this is, and this spring, is your pressure pop-off valve. This is what it, uh, governs your oil pressure so that this doesn't just make infinite amount of pressure if the pump is really good. This one is not, <laughs> so it's not really gonna be a problem anyway, but let's say you hit 80 PSI or 65 PSI, this opens up and there's a bypass to regulate it to that set pressure. If you're an engine that just seems to make infinite amount of pressure, that pop-off valve is probably stuck or in contrary, I've seen instances where the pop-up valve is 
too weak and the engine is not making enough pressure because it's letting it all bypass in the pump. There we go. All right, he's gonna stay. And our secondary gear. Oil comes in one side, is passed through the gears, and out the other side, pressurized. Just like a supercharger. For the record, these are not the best style pumps. The Chevy used these as well. The Ford Geroder style with one big gear and the thing that oscillates, those are much better pump styles. You can't actually see spikes in pressure. It's much smoother. All right, let's get that properly torqued down, pre-fill the oil filter and put it on. One pre-filled oil filter. Let's see how much I can spill myself here. That's the one that was on it, but it's brand new, so I'm not worried about it. What we'll probably do is run this for a few minutes and then change that oil filter. So I'm sure there's a bunch of metal in the system after, you know, potentially running for like five minutes or whatever. Either way, let's get this guy hooked up and we're ready to fire this up again. Bring it on down. All right, oil filter's pre-filled. We've got a mechanical gauge. Mook's gonna watch that and call out what we have for pressure. Go ahead, Mook. Let's see what happens. See if she quiets down. Ooh. Go ahead. Anything? What? 50. Going up to 60. About 60. Yeah, tons of pressure. It still does not sound good. It's not all of them. Sounds good. It's a little quieter. Give it a rev. Oh boy. Aww. Well, I don't know what to tell you, Mookers. I can tell you one thing, it's really smoky. <laughs> I don't want to say it was getting quieter, because I'm not confident that that's a true statement at all. I don't exactly have an abundance of AMC 360s sitting around, so... Maybe it'll get better or it'll blow up. <laughs> Those are kind of literally the two options. Yeah. So I suppose we'll see which one it chooses. All right, Mook. Ready to try it again? I suppose. That's a chance. Not a lot of blow by, that's good. Oh god, I take it all back. I'm not sure that one is even a lifter. That sounds like a rod. That's pretty fast. A lifter would be half tempo. It would be half the RPM because the cam spins half the speed of the crank. Rod knock would be full match RPM. It'd, it'd be a lot faster, like like this, I think. It's always a little hard to tell. It's still hard to tell. The valves are a lot quieter. Go ahead and shut her down. If I had to guess, it torched one of the end bearings and we're just hearing that rod knocking around in there. Heck. I guess we put it up in the air and pull the pan off? I think we can do that on this Jeep. Let's do a bearing roll. Okay. So, sorry, is there something in your way? There's a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> you have to like go up here or like all the way back here. There's a bit of rust in her, but really not bad. Those are floor pans. Ooh. Oh, that's just carpet. Yeah. That is just carpet. This Jeep actually has the Flintstones trim. No <laughs> this one's not as bad. Here's our fuel tank. He did say it had a fuel delivery issue. Is this plastic? That is a plastic. She's pretty rusty too. The shrouding for it is. Oh, as is the frame. Uh-oh. That's not exactly excellent. Oh boy, we're gonna have to brace that up. Let's see. 
belt mount or seat mount is completely absent. Well, it's that, somehow it's there, but it's doing nothing. She's seen some winters, that's for sure. Is this an auxiliary fuel tank? Oh, it is. Oh, they had an electric fuel pump. That's what that switch was. Right there. There's the factory. Wait a minute. They're connected together? That's where it big leaks. What the hell? Right there. It was all wet when we were unloading it. That tank is hooked to this tank. As if it's supposed to fill the back one and then overflow into that. What is going on here? It comes in, it splits to two. One fills this tank, one fills that tank, and then there's just a big crossover tube, I guess. <laughs> no, it looks like you got her, eh? There she went, I'm stuck in the gasket. <laughs> the starter is out. What is going on? <laughs> Progress. What are you hitting? The Zoust. Okay, let me let me put this down and give you a hand. Uh, yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> There's one very specific way you can do this without removing the exhaust. Bring your pan down, rotate it clockwise from the until it's completely backwards. There we go. Completely backwards, and then come out. So if you go in, put it in backwards, and then spin it into place. Okay, let's see what we're looking at here. Really, she's a pretty clean motor inside. Like, that's that's pretty good. We'll take that. Wiggling these rods back and forth. They're nice and tight on this journal. This one right here, however, I've got some slop in that guy and some noise out of that one. I do believe that right there is our rod knock. So if we do a bearing roll on this, it should clean that up, hopefully, and we can fix that. If nothing else, We'll have new bearings on the bottom, and then we don't have to worry about that anymore. Let's pop that one apart and get a measurement on it, see what we got. Interestingly enough, this last rod has different uh, bolts in it, different nuts. And so does this one up here in the middle. I don't know why. Everything else has these long factory nuts, so... Looks like someone's probably been in here before. This motor may have even been redone. There we go. Well, she isn't spun. That's good. Hmm. You know what, that's another sign that someone's been in here. This one is stamped two, and it was on number four, seven. So that rod is not where it was supposed to be. It might not even be from this motor. So as you can see, all these shiny spots throughout here are metal that's been picked up, melted, and drug across. It's all been smeared in as it rotates. So this thing's been through hell. Uh, I've definitely seen worse bearings, but this one has a ton, ton of spalding in it, which, you know, running for five minutes with no oil, we'll do that. Threw the part number in, pulled up a uh, 20 thou undersize, I believe. From the looks of it, someone's probably had to crank out and turned it 20 thousandths under on the rods and probably redone this whole motor. It looks really clean inside and it runs really good despite making terrible noises. So even though this is a bit of a rusty hunk, the interior's really nice and the motor's really good. Honestly, this is not as bad of a Jeep as I've seen on Marketplace over the years, though. Especially for two grand. Yeah. It's pretty good. All right, let's get some of these ordered up, and then we'll do a bearing roll. Morning, everyone. It's been, I think, five, six, a hundred days since we were here, but we're back in the shop with the goop. We got a little bit snowed in over the weekend, as you can see right there. So we stayed home and got some stuff done at the house and went snowmobiling as often as we could, and today we are back at the shop. I have started cleaning the oil pan off, getting all that goop out of there, and this morning we picked up a new oil pan gasket, and some bearings, and some black RTV. Maybe. Snowman. All right, where the hell do we leave off with this? Oil pan and bearings. Oh, that's right, <laughs> bearing roll. Okay, well, I'm gonna go warm up, you do that, and then we'll re rejoin later. I don't know, I can't really think. I'm too cold. Out with the old, in with the new. These are also 20 overs, or 20 unders, sorry. These are Cleve lights instead of Federal Moguls. I like these a little better. They're dusty, so that's fun. 
<laughs> they, uh, I don't think anyone's ordered bearings for a 360 AMC from O'Reilly's for, for a while. <laughs> There's your comparison. These have a chamfer. On some crankshafts right here, and right here there will be a fillet where it's rounded. It's filleted up to the actual uh, casting of the crank right here. You gotta make sure that chamfer is up against the fillet on the outside of that crank. Otherwise you're gonna run a straight 90 edge into a cup and bite into that corner and burn bearings out really quick. Attention to detail and thick oil will get you a long ways in life. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like this. <laughs> Just a little extra reassurance in there. Perfection. Gooping it up. Yep. For the goop. For the goop. If you're confused which way it goes, there's a certain orientation for the tangs on the bearing. Give that a Google too. It might be engine specific, it might not. I'm hardly an engine builder. I'm just really good at doing brakes and making old shit run. Alright, get the nuts back on here. Torque that down. And that's one done. Seven more to go. See you after lunch. The last melon. Number one. As we moved forward, much as I expected, the bearings got better and better. I'm going to show them our display over there. Our Let's go look. Junk. This was towards the back of the engine. Working forward. Just ignore that one and maybe that one a little bit. Yeah, there's one like number three. It was it had seen better days as well. That was weird, but beyond that, it makes total sense because the engine or the crank is oiled from the front to the back on this motor. So I figured all that noise that sounded deep in the engine was uh, rod bearings. And if you'll remember before, we could wiggle these. I can't move them at all anymore. So yeah, I think we got her. Next step here is to clean up all our gasket surfaces, get that oil pan on, get some RTV on the seals, and then eat tacos while it dries. We'll be back after that, dump some oil in it, see if it runs. We're gooping the goop. Gooping the goop. <laughs> <laughs> Working well for you? Yeah. Oop. There you go. Okay, now let's see if I can remember how to put this back in. It was backwards, right? Yeah. And then swing around. Oh, I've already hit the gasket. Okay, there we go. Good enough for the geep we drive. This is a goop. Sorry, the goop. The other one's geep. I keep forgetting. Yeah, get it right. Oh. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, I hope it was lined up. Took a second to get all those aligned, but we got them. And just tighten it. Tighten everything down. And we'll be good to go here. <coughs> We're starting over. What was that? <laughs> We're not just, starting over. I'm taking over. <laughs> okay. Hello, my name is Mook. If you can hear this, I need help. What? Please send help. <laughs> We got the oil pan back installed, and so now I'm pouring the oil that we took out of it back into it. Oh, you left the I had two margaritas part Shut out. up, Kevin. <laughs> That's private information. It's classified. <laughs> this is all filled up. You're watching for oil pressure. I'm listening for noise. Shockingly, it says zero right now. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> the lifter. Yeah, pressure. What do you got? It's still going up, but it's at 40 right now. Yeah, I wondered about this. Yeah, it's definitely not the rod bearings. Despite them looking terrible, I really didn't see any direct issues with those, so I do believe this could be a bunch of valve train all making noise. This is not what I had in mind for this video. It's supposed to be quick and easy. Well, from the looks of it, that motor probably has to come apart. She don't sound happy, but she runs good. If engine has to come apart, that sounds like an episode two to me. Okay. For now, let's make this thing run and drive. I mean, drive. Okay.
Okay. What? <laughs> That's like fixed brakes. Hello. <laughs> Give me it. I wonder if these are original rooms. They're like turbines. They kind of smell like them. They smell like original rooms? Yeah. Oh, you love to see it. Yeah, love to see it. <laughs> good tires. They look like lots of good tread. Don't threat. touch me! <laughs> <laughs> GM brakes. That's good to see. That'll be easy. These need turned really bad. These are gonna have to come off. We got all new bits of this and ooh boy, yeah. New hoses. Shall we, Mook? Uh, yeah, after a minute. <laughs> Don't you hit your knee on the tire? Yeah. Good thing I have my safety glasses on though. <laughs> there you go. You. They're pretty worn down. <laughs> Time for a snap ring. God damn it. One in doubt, pliers it out. Here's our gear that attaches our axle shaft to the hub, translating this rotating energy into this rotating surface here, which of course attaches to the wheel. And a full time, it is just a piece of metal that attaches them full time forever. So anytime you're going down the road, even if you're in two wheel drive on the dash or the transfer case, this is still turning that front drive shaft. So it's a lot more parasitic drag through here, a lot more parasitic loss and mileage loss, and a lot of wear and tear on the components up front for literally no reason. These were pretty common in the 80s. GM ran a lot of these, Ford ran a lot of these too. What you can do is put regular part-time hubs on there and then have the ability to get out and shut this off so that when this is spinning, this is not, and you get a little more mileage and less wear. I do believe I know where we could probably find a set of those around here. Ooh, goopy. Next up, inside of our hub, we have that uh, spline nut right there. Go down to O'Reilly's, get yourself one of these. There we go. I come in here with a pick and get this retention ring off. This holds on to a pin on each, or on the rear nut, I should say. It keeps him from turning. There's that pin I was talking about. Now those are what holds the preload on your wheel bearings and holds the whole uh, disc assembly onto the truck. With those out of the way, the whole thing can come right off. And there's your outer bearing. There's your inner bearing and your seal. Go ahead and knock this apart and get it on the lathe and get it all cleaned up. There you go. Progress is coming along. As you can see, I have our rotors on the Benpack Ranger Precision Combination Brake Blade. This thing does drums, rotors, flywheels. I recently successfully did a flywheel with no issues. This thing is absolutely awesome. If you're interested in this or any of the other equipment Benpack sells, check it out on their website, benpack.com. All right. Our rotors are all cleaned up. We've had our uh, bearings and stuff soaking in a little bit of gasoline over here for a few minutes. This guy out there. Yeah, you gotta say it with me. Thank you. Now it's clean. <laughs> it wasn't before. Kevin did a great job licking these clean so they look decent. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Check this out. Ooh. Gooby. Into the gas. Get these suckers cleaned up, and then I believe Quick Performance shot me a call. I think we have some new hubs to put on. Ooh. All right, got everything cleaned up. It's looking good. Getting ready to re-grease our bearings here. There we go. Oh, there's some goo. Yep, just enough to push all the stuff out. There we go. A greased bearing with grease between the uh, rollers. Bearings are all lubed up. New wheel seals. Everything's all greased inside. Looking good. All right, we've got our outer bearing in. We're going to do this one, the one with the nipple first. This will set our preload on our bearing, same as the nut on a uh, two wheel drive system. And then these guys are just here to hold him in place instead of a cotter pin. Set our preload to whatever it is you desire. Mine's yeah, right about there. 
And then, the fun part, this ring has a notch on it, which will align with the notch on the spindle collar here. And it needs to line up with the pin on that last piece. And sure enough, it doesn't. So I need to tighten or loosen it. Get a little more tightening this ring again. Did it go? It went. Okay, she's in. And now the outer ring, which does not have the nipple, TM. And we simply tighten this one down on top of it, and it'll hold them in place. And we can move on to our worn hubs. All right, time now for our manual hubs. I've got some grease and all the splines in here. I'm just going to take this guy, drop him in, rotate that center. There we go. Drop him into place, and rotate this again until that moves freely right there, all the way in and out. As you can see now, we have the outer shell of the hub and this piece that is splined into that outer moving separate from the axle. And when I turn this to lock, this engages and they all move together. And that is how a manual locking hub works. Now, it goes without saying a huge thanks to Quick Performance for hooking us up with this. You guys probably know they're all about nine inch rear axles and putting them in anything. But beyond that, they're also all about front axles and four wheel drive applications. They sell stuff like lockers and lunchbox lockers and these worn hubs cheaper than anywhere else I've ever been able to find them and they are the same exact high quality products that you buy everywhere else. And this one just happens to even be color matched. So a huge thank you to Quick Performance. Check them out on quickperformance.com. Go get yourself some excellent stuff for a hell of a deal. I didn't even mention the fact they sell brake components. They're like one of the number one distributors of Willwood. They'll sell you a whole backing plates for the rear. You just take the whole dust cover and everything off and a fully assembled, ready to go drum package just goes boop, four bolts and bolts on. Hook up the line, done. Why didn't we do that? I, I don't know, It's it would be so much faster. I'm kind of mad at you, not gonna lie. All right, once this is in place, drop your large ring in, grab these two screws that you've put in there prior, Give it a wiggle, make sure it does. Some models need a clip right here on this guy. Some do not. If you're curious about it, reach back, grab the U-joint, and you give it a push, and right there is a little bit of a ring land where we can put that clip. There we go. He's in place, looking good. There we go. Take your outer cap. Go ahead and push that O-ring into place. Make sure he's set to free. Before you go through all the work, let's go ahead and verify that this is working. As you can see, our drive shaft in there, way up on that pumpkin, is not spinning. Now I turn this to lock. Drive shaft spins. No more clanky, clunky noises from this front end. Besides, you know, the worn out U joint. But, yeah. And better mileage, less wear. Let's get back to putting some calipers on this. All right, look at that. Beautiful. I'm regooping the goop, Kevin. Oh yeah, get some anises on there. Yeah. One more for the night. Come back and do lines in the morning. Yeah. Sweet. See you then, stink. Yeah. All right, so it's been a day. I'm working on some other stuff. Uh, finished up the lines up front, the hoses up front. Front brakes should be good to go. Working on getting these drums off. They are being very, very, very stubborn. I've been beating the shit out of them. And there is absolutely no sign of movement on the center hub. So, you know what? If you can't take it off this way, you can always take it off this way. If it wasn't for the fact that I'm scared of the uh, wheel cylinder in there blowing up and, you know, killing Mook, I would probably just have left this alone, but... I am fearful of that, and I don't want to have to think about that every time she drives this. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> huh. What I'm trying to do is split the face of this cast iron drum. Why that's not happening, I don't know. I've never seen this before. Huh. I always thought those were one piece. No wonder they're so springy. This is actually a piece of stamped steel. 
What in the shit? <laughs> this is the worst I've ever seen. Tell you what, I'm gonna have a beer about it. We'll be back, try again. Had a beer about it, got the torch out, heated up this inner ring for like 60 seconds, one hit, it flew off. That never works. <laughs> All right, now I know. Morning, Mook. I'm mad at you if you can't tell. <laughs> Why would that be? Can't you see my crossed arms? Nah. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> How are you today? I'm a little stuck, but I'm good. Ready to do some, some goop stuff once again? It seems I left you alone for an afternoon while I was playing our wedding and you blew up a little something on my goop, huh? Yeah, the drums are in pieces. I just can't leave you alone. Good thing I ordered new ones with your credit card. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! That's what the business card's for. Very nice. New one? What do you mean? This one's perfectly fine. Oh yeah, why did we why did we do any of this? Good point. I walked over here in the middle of it. We got ourselves the WC51081. Uh there's a scream in there. There, it's done. Installed. Alright, let's hit the road. Yeah. <laughs> there was a noise. <laughs> Your butt boomed. No, that was it finishing installing. Oh. <laughs> Alright, well, we're waiting on parts for the rest of the brakes. Might as well move on to the fuel system. I actually have no knowledge that this doesn't actually work just fine. The guy just said it did it. Based off what else we've seen here, I think I gotta test this before I start tearing stuff apart. I'm gonna blow some air backwards down it and listen for bubbles in the tank. Oh. Seems like that should work just fine to me. Let's hook it back up. Maybe that filter is just plugged. I don't know. Don't drink that. That smells like fresh fuel to me. Yeah, it's pretty clean. I mean, the fun bucket is obviously <laughs> making it a little dirty. Clearly our fuel system works, so that's good. Get this hooked back up, I suppose. All right, I'll give her a little bit to go off of here. Hit her, Moop. Begin terrible noises. Which might go away yet, you never know. That'd be really cool if they did. Go ahead. Yeah, my clutch fan's junk. There she goes. It's running. Yeah. Running off. The goop is running off its own juice. Yeah. Goop juice. How's your oil pressure though? 65. I don't know what the squeak noise is, that's a new one. It's quieting down. There's only one or three ticks left. I don't know what the squeak is, it almost sounds like a belt or a water pump. Or a can bearing. I think the lifters are probably stuck with a bit of metal and they've been pumping up finally. Tenth gauge is going up a little bit. Is it? Just above the bottom line. Let her idle, let's see if she comes up the tent. We're down to one tick noise though. Kind of half rhythm, like valve train. It would be a miracle and a half, but there's a chance everything kind of works itself out. Maybe. A lot of something burning off this head over here. Ooh. The oil line. Oh, it shut it off. We melted our oil line. I guess I forgot to zip tie that out of the way. All right, well, shit. <laughs> she runs off her own fuel system though, Mook. That's good news. It is. Wait for the parts to come in in the morning, fix the oil line, finish the brakes? I suppose. I suppose too. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, hey, how's it going? As you can see, we have new wheel cylinders on each side. I still have to redo the brake lines, but things are going good. This is pretty typical stuff. We've done this a million times on the channel. It's just, these are just Chevy brakes. I'm not convinced that the uh, previous owner didn't pull the parking brake at one point. We'll see when we go to drop the drums on. The spring was pretty tight on the cable. No one's told you or it's not apparent anything older than pretty much 15 years, sometimes even 10, any northern vehicles especially. Don't use the parking brake ever because unless it's a manual and it's used all the time. On the automatics, chances are you hit that and it's just gonna go down and then the pedal will come back up, but these lines or these cables are rusted up, so it's just gonna stay on full parking brake forever. 
And then your truck doesn't move or the brakes are on fire and you gotta come in here with a bar and pry that or cut these, it's a nightmare, just don't touch it. So here's something unique about this exact style of GM brake or at least this exact style of spring. This bottom spring, uh, I always put this on before I put the adjuster on, makes life way easier. What you need to pay attention to is not the direction these loops face, but where this is in relation to the top or the bottom of this coil. It needs to be coming off the top of the coil so that it clears the star wheel. I put this all together and I was having troubles turning this one, but the other one turned just fine. So I came back and looked and realized that, yeah, that's a specific bend where this hits the star wheel. You can see where it was hitting and it doesn't allow it to turn, but this way allows it to turn. You learn something every day, I suppose. Attention to detail will save your ass every time. All right, get that guy on. Take this, shove it in the long way, bring it back to this side, screw them in all the way, straighten them out. Force everything apart, slip them in place, center it up. That's more like it. I could not turn that by hand before. Let's fix some lines and then adjust them to our drums and we're good to go. If you guys have been with us for a while, you've heard me mention this before. This is the Capri Tools uh, quarter inch, or sorry, 3 16 inch brake line tool. This thing is fantastic. You can get these on Amazon. They also have a quarter inch. I will put links for both these and the link that I use to buy bulk brake line really cheap with good fittings down in the description. There's a lot of options for brake line. A lot of them come with really shitty fittings with a hole for the line itself is way too big. I found one that's good every time I buy it. It'll be listed down below right next to these. These are fantastic because they're quick. They make really good flares and you can do it on the vehicle and only take up like this much space. You could use a wrench. There we go. That'll do her. On to the goop. Well, sure as shit. We got all the lines and everything on. I went to drop the drums on and they're tight. They don't want to turn. And the adjusters are all the way in, which means the parking brake has been pulled. What you need to do to release this is get a pry bar between the center and the parking brake lever back here. It's gonna screw your springs up and stuff, but you're waiting to hear that cable go and drag forward. There it goes. back into place. Yeah, that spring looks much more relaxed now. That's how you reset them if someone does pull your parking brake for some ungodly reason. Just don't use them on anything older than 15 years in the north. And that's probably pushing it. Down. Up. Up. Down. Down. Up. Up. Give it a feel. Fixed? Yeah. Okay, good. That <laughs> scared me. <laughs> okay, there we go. Brakes are done. Let's put some tires on it. I'm gonna go for a drive? Yeah, with the socket on. Okay, good. <laughs> All new brakes, oil line is zip tied out of the way. Got our air cleaner back on. I found two vacuum leaks I just fixed. Give her some pumps. What's your pressure readout? 60. Hell yeah. It sounds terrible, but it's got 60 PSI. That's how we're gonna fix this for now. Yeah, that's way better. All right, let's see if it drives. We literally don't know. Oh. Yeah, it's not that much noise. The motor's fine, right? Tell you what, one thing I didn't realize is I don't really fit in this Jeep. That's okay, it's milk size. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think it's just because the headliner's hanging down. Nothing like back there though. Yeah, exactly. I'll just get some dinosaur headliner. Wee! First time driving Goop. I'll take it to meet Geep. All right, Goop, that's Geep. Be nice to each other. That motor's sounding arguably a little bit better and better. Like it's down to just one or two noisy valves. <laughs> I'm a little scared. <laughs> we could probably just tighten up the lash. Maybe, I don't know what kind of valve train, I don't know if they're adjustable. How's it drive? Pretty good. That yeah. does. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> tick, 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 turns into tick, lick, lick, lick. <laughs> oh my. Hey, it'll either go away, never change, or die. 
shifting. Yeah, it's shifting. Okay. Speedometer works. I'm going 20. Hell yeah. You got all the oil. Now you're going 40. <laughs> For a second there. I'm driving with my dream Jeep. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Thank you. It goes woo, just like my other Jeep. Just Jeep things. I'm used to it. There's a lot of shifting in the. Hey, the center caps. Oh my gosh. We're riding ugly now. Oh, looky there. Nice. Give me the old thumbs up, Mike. That's a nice one. Now doing the work. I'm gonna follow it. All right, get on her a little. Let's see what she does. <laughs> Despite the ticking, which is down to one tick. It, wow. Oh, it stinks. It stinks. Or that truck. No, it's no, probably it's us. Is the oil line on fire again? I don't know, but there's smoke everywhere. I think we're down to one tick now. And despite that, it uh, actually ran really good. Yeah. We didn't touch the carburetor or anything. I booped it. Think this thing will spin them? I really don't know. Let's find out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And that is all the faster a mook needs to go. Not so much for her safety, but for everyone's, you know. It's a wild hecker. Hate to turn that loose in the public with more than 200 horse. Plenty of horsepower for a mook. What did you tell them? Nothing. It has five horsepower? That no, was I said 200. It's a secret. Might have been a vast over-exaggeration. I don't need to be speedy in this thing. I just love the looks of them. It does look good. And you look pretty good over there driving it. Thank you. Well, what do you think, Mook? Good. Good? I love it. Let's see how the oil pressure does warm. Yeah, she could probably use some thicker oil. What do we put in? 1040, I thought. Yeah. Well, let's, actually, we'll it's kick whatever her up. was in it. This is doing a lot better than I thought it was going to. I thought we'd be a long ways off from you being able to drive this, but... Me too. Here we are. Oh, hang on. This thing's a Jeep. We don't even know if the four-wheel drive works. Done. Yeah, not very <laughs> confidence inspiring. <laughs> At least this part will be. We'll know for sure the front part is locked. Yep. Nope. <laughs> the uh, vacuum four wheel drive doesn't work, believe it or not. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, wild. Yeah. There were a bunch of missing vacuum lines on the hood, so that doesn't surprise me. Well, look, and I'm doing Jeep things in another Jeep. You sure are. This is what y'all do, right? No, they just put one tire on. I know. I didn't want to <laughs> on do each that other. to this one. <laughs> I'll get my other Jeep out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, what do you think, Mook? I'm impressed. I'm honestly. impressed, too. It did a couple miles. And well it mannered. halfway up a snowbank. Yeah, it had two-wheel drive. <laughs> so we got to fix that. we got to fix the hole in the floor, the hole in the tank, the hole in the frame the hole in the camshaft or whatever the hell all that noise is up there. All the, holes. all the holes and then goop will be good to go. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have today, but it is not all the time we'll be spending on this. Make sure you guys subscribe to see when this returns to the channel. Probably here soon-ish. I don't know, Mook's yeah. gonna bug me about it yeah. until we get it fixed so she can drive it. But yeah. this next couple months is gonna be a bit of a mess. We have someone coming to help us in March and I'm just trying to make it to March. Thank you guys very much for watching this episode. Thank you to Mook for all of her help. Thank you to Goop for only mildly fighting us all the way and then being pretty okay in the end. Best way to support the channel is to check out junkyarddigs.com, buy some merch, buy some hats. We have new koozies coming out that are much better than the old ones. You can check them out on the website here soon. We'll see you. There's youth sizes. Oh, there's youth size shirts. I haven't said this in a video, I keep forgetting. We finally have youth size shirts on the website. So go check those out, junkyarddigs.com. All right, from all of us here, thank you much for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace. Lord! Oh. My knees don't I was like that say anymore. That hurt my <laughs> knees just watching that. I'm good, I bounced back. Hugger scope.